around. Yeah. That wasn't uh, until they started streaming. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, looks like we got a five second delay. That's not bad. Cool. I hope they show off Serious Sam here. Yeah. Were you really disappointed with... I was so was disappointed. Digital? Devolver Digital. Devolver Digital. They showed off a Crow Team game. They're the people behind Serious Sam, but they didn't show off Serious Sam. And in the teaser trailer, it says, See you at E3 2018. <laughs> Is it going to be a console exclusive? No. Okay. <coughs> so like, we, wouldn't, we probably wouldn't look for it in Sony or anything like that. No. Hmm. Well, well here It'll, we go. It might be here. Maybe. This, they said this is a grab bag of PC games, so we'll see what they got. Yeah. There is magic Origins. in PC gaming. Uh, Darwin Project. It says... No idea. Don't just obey the rules. Rewrite Doom them. mixed with Overwatch. It says don't <laughs> Start just belly. listen to stories. Inhabit um, them. Uh, it says don't just accept the, the limits. Over the beyond I don't them. Know. Yeah, that's like the crew one. It says, Token don't Arcade. just play games. Uh, Revel in them. Unleash Fortnite. them. Fortnite. It says, seriously, is every Jeez, game right. Battle Royale now? Or is it just me? <laughs> From <laughs> <Yep>. mountaintops <laughs> to dungeons. From deep waters Subnautica. to deeper space. Or From or... solo quests to mass engagements. CDs. There is magic in PC gaming. Let's celebrate that magic sure. together. This I'm is sure. PC Gaming sure. Show. Cool. PC Gaming Master Race. Oh, this is sponsored by PC Gamer. That makes sense. Yeah. Cool. And now your uh, host, Sean Plot. Oh. Hello, oh. hello, hello to everyone online. Oh, this guy again. Hello to everyone at the Will Turn. Welcome to the PC Gaming Show. This guy's a little weird. Yes. Yes. Well, these, these smaller, like, shows have My to be something to be memorable. My name is I'm your host today. Like, I am delighted to be gore. here. We have a fantastic show day for you. Nine. Let's not talk about First, all of you came out to the Will Turn. Thanks for joining us. The Will Turn is just a beautiful venue here in Los Angeles to all of you on the Warframe is sponsoring Twitch. Thanks for joining That's us. That's a lot of sponsors. Partners. Hey, as well, I'm talking to you, Drop Frames. Great to have you here. And of course, to all the wonderful sponsors that help hey, make the I haven't dropped any frames. Show, it's on your guys' then. Again <laughs> for the fourth straight year. Now, <laughs> four years on. as well, just like Bethesda. Mm hmm. Interesting. Now I'm not the only host here this year. I have my co-host. He got a lot Balcony. bigger it's four Frankie years ago. Ward Apparently. Us today. How's it going, Frankie? Hey, Sean. Hi. I'm going to be up here in the balcony with today a bunch pretty of huge, created eh? new PC games coming yeah, your way. Yeah, four conferences so today. To some indie gems. I think that's Frankie, about usual, we though. Are mm -hmm. so for excited Monday. for the show to get started. We have over 30 games we're going to be looking 30. at across the next 90 minutes. Yeah, hour so and a half. So let's get it underway. Our very first title is from Coffee Stain Studios. Their game has absolutely massive. They did go to simulator as well as okay. automation. Let's take a look at Satisfactory. Yeah, so I did a story about my uncle. It's too bad you're not gonna be here for the whole broadcast. Yeah, it's fine though. Yeah, can't put this down as simulation because they did go to simulator. I'm sure there'll be something in here, Santa. Yeah, probably. Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to check out the price of loot box coin. What? Oh, it's 150 now. <coughs> this is one thing Devolver Digital did yes, yesterday was do loot box coin. The price changes randomly every hour. Why? That's the point. There is no point. Hey, it's a battle royale game. Deforestation. <laughs> Anytime playing Age of Empires. <laughs> this is weird. Is yeah. it like not blocky Minecraft? This looks like a simulation to me. <laughs> what is 
this. Like, do they call it satisfactory? Something like that? About making our factory? It's a factory sim? A launch trailer. Yeah. I'm gonna add this right now, I see why they're just gonna, it's gonna be an hour and a half. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 30 games, you just get about, uh, each game gets like, what, three minutes? Satisfactory. Mm, it's a simulator. That looks really weird. Yeah, it does. Joining me on the stage to talk okay. about it. Is the game director well, at Coffee Stain Studios. I have to go. It's Oscar Gilsane. Gotta get ready for work. Sad. Yeah. Come here, Oscar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Welcome to the stage. Hey, have a good stream. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great, have a great E3. Now, Oscar, I just want to have begin right away by asking what <laughs> is Satisfactory with Sony all next. about? Satisfactory is uh, essentially about what time is that at? huge hotline factories. Like uh, so you play so as an engineer that's been sent yeah. from Earth. Yeah, I mean, I was getting this anyways. I'm probably not going to be home until after midnight. Yeah. We'll send to that no. at the end of the trailer there. Is there one yeah. after And to build, Sony? I need a, a whole Nintendo. ton of parts. The last one. Uh, which you need yeah. to build. And Nintendo's the last one. Make them for you. Okay. So you'll start out pretty simple. Yep. Um, All right. Uh, two uh, machines. Uh, yeah. And then you uh, just sorry. expand uh, and expand and expand until you finally you need to start cutting down trees. Oh, huh, no, it's just me. And with, like, more <laughs> convenient concrete. <laughs> and, you know... For people who haven't played this type of game, can you well, give an example of what producing a more advanced resource might look like? Right. Um, after a while, you'll need to create something uh, more. So it's a like first. So this game is a first-person uh, factory point, you'll have some copper stones, builder, uh, wires, and, and I'm guessing you just have to like plastic. You need to uh, get some oil. Make as much currency you as you can. And you find this oil. Yeah. Uh, build some oil pumps and oil refineries, and and set up a transport. Uh, with self-driving vehicles between the outpost and your factory. Yeah, and I want to talk about that scale because, I, you know, there's a lot of games where you build a house or a small town. How much area are we talking about where all your factories There's There's multiple exist? people in there, oh, though, this, so it's, uh, it almost seems like maybe enormous. to be multiplayer or something. Uh, the, the main part, which would probably be the biggest, will start spreading more and more and more. Or in some cases, we'll have players just building these You know, now that I think about it, this, I feel like they have actually made a few more. games like but this including the, uh, uh, recently, the and that you need like it's a genre that's becoming a little bit more popular. Yeah. So you'll have vehicles driving all over. Now, I want to ask about the first-person perspective, because these yeah, types of games typically are top-down. Why okay, first it is first-person, yeah. We, we want it to feel like the, the player is the one building the stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. a new and way to you know, interact build, with the world. You built a bunch of stuff, and you can see these enormous buildings, the structures towering yeah. above you. But also, when you go out and explore, uh, you'll be the one, like, you go through the underbrush and in the jungles yeah. and whatever. I mean, in the trailer, it even looked like there's a lot more to explore, like different environments. I don't really see why this game deserves yeah, yeah, so the, much the attention, is, though, right uh, now. Point to make it big and varied. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's about uh, 30 square kilometers in yeah. size, so it's kind of enormous. Wow. And, you know, one final question. I saw multiple engineers there. How does multiplayer work? Oh, it's a, it's a co-op game. Okay. So you'll basically you'll awesome. start up a server and play with your friends. So, yes. now, tell us <laughs> so it's like factory Minecraft, on this game. not so with cubes. So we got cubes. a close alpha uh, planned in the coming months. Uh. Uh, so you can sign up for uh, for the alpha at satisfactorygame.com. Uh, and yeah, then you'll know. Well, great, Oscar. Thanks for joining me on stage once again. That is satisfactorygame.com. Now, up in the balcony, Frankie, I understand you have our very first indie title of the day. We do indeed, Sean, because here's something we love about the PC platform. It's such fertile ground for creative ideas from small teams. Neo Cab is an emotional survival game set in the future about gig labor, tech disruption, and the experience of being a driver for hire, perhaps mm. the last of your kind. From the brand new indie studio, Chance Agency, let's watch the first gameplay trailer for Neo Cab. Uh, I didn't hear what she said. <laughs> what game is this? Tron World. Oh, Neo Cab. And then Neo Cab to the round. Is it a text based adventure? Is that a text based telltale?
they human? Looks really weird. Santa, do you want to play uh, now, our a text-based Telltale Adventure? Is in the battle no, royale no. genre. For C3 2018, what do you expect? We have several battle royale games we're going to be talking about today because the Our battle next royale game format is, is very battle simple, royale because 2018. Players play in an ever shrinking space until they have several battle royale scanning. games to show off to this have already been doing all kinds of different yeah. explorations of what this could possibly They wrote an article be. about what to and expect. Very first yeah. From every battle press conference? We'll be introducing uh -huh. today They're like, PC gaming show! Wait, is, that's not how this works. Wait, players. we are Autocon doing this one. Games. Let's look battle at royale. Mavericks <laughs> Proving Grounds. There are seriously way too many battle royale games. Yeah. Seriously, because I can't even announce a brand new game if it if it's, has anything related to shooting without saying like, oh, it's, and it's set to contain the battle royale mode. Fudge, by the time all these games come out, no one's going to care about this genre anymore. Another cookie cutter battle royale. Cosmetics to wear, but you have to buy them. Microtransactions. Let's be just PUBG. A little bit more environmental stuff, I guess. Mavericks Proving Grounds. Join me on the stage to talk about Mavericks Proving oh Grounds. Oh my goodness, are they CEO really going to spend Automaton a few minutes games, on every James game? Thompson. Oh. James, welcome. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Now, I want to immediately ask, what about Prove, or excuse me, Mavericks Proving Grounds distinguishes itself from other Battle Royale games? Yeah, well, as you said, it's a very popular formula, and yeah. you know that last man standing uh, kind of game type is incredibly compelling by itself. But so this is, is what really they're going to keep doing. I might just like play a game on my. We're doing this on Santa's computer. I've got my laptop here. I might just play something. <laughs> thousand players, uh, but really, it's it's about depth as well. It's about the fact that yeah. that environment is even a bigger step. The simulation and yeah. those elements sort of combining together. Yeah, I, I want to zoom in right on the 1,000 players aspect. How does that really shift the dynamic yeah, from right? the, say, 100 that we're typically used to? Mm. Well, it's really about combining mm. scale with the depth of simulation. So the fact that together, what you actually have is a landscape that means you're making decisions off a lot more information. Yeah, I mean, because you hinted at that twice what now. What do you mean by there's a lot more players? information in the environment for players to process? So take a con concrete example, right? So let's say a player is walking through the map, they'll be leaving footprints, they'll be displacing foliage, like oh, grass okay. bending. Uh, but can you know, siege style gameplay in houses, so that's like a lot of destruction systems that sort of together make the map yeah, much more of a dynamic environment. It's like a recent history of who could have been here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I want to ask about what more is in store for Mavericks Proving Grounds. I understand that this is a lot more out game features than someone might expect. Yeah, so it's not just that session based gameplay, you enter the game through the capital, which is our sort of assistant social hub. So we draw from the MMORPG side of things. It's really a, right. it's a full world, not just a map. You know, so it's, it's got a persistent game type side to it too. Does the yeah. map still shrink in size, or is it just a makes a much richer MMO experience? Now, where is it just like go um, to find out more? Daisy. Well, we've I mean. just launched our site right now, so if you're right. interested in signing up for the closed beta, uh, you can do that now beta? at mavericks.gg/closed-beta, 
And uh, actually, if you register this week, you'll get special in-game content for free from E3. Awesome. And we have only 100,000 slots for the first group signing up, so right that will give you some beta access, but cool. I'm sure there are a lot more people than that on the stream, so quickly do that if you're interested. Yeah. Well, James, thanks so much for joining us. Once again, that's yeah, maverick.gg. Our very next game helps showcase the extraordinary power of modders. Frankie, tell us about it. It does indeed, Sean. On PC, we don't just play what's given to us. We mod games to make our own experiences. And for many developers, modding is a way to turn a hobby into a career. The Forgotten City is the perfect example. Hmm. It's a standalone game Forgotten that's a reimagining of a wildly successful mod. In fact, the first mod in history to win a National Writers Guild Award. For the first time ever. Here's gameplay from the Forgotten City. World exclusive. suffer the same fate I did. Excellent censorship. <laughs> I've spent a lifetime in this place. An ancient underground city. Its existence long forgotten. Searching for a way out. All I found is a window into the past. If even one person here commits a sin, everyone will die. Whoa. I tried to set things right, but whatever I did, it took me right back to the beginning. It's all up to you now. Go back. Investigate. Talk to everyone. Help them out if it'll win their trust. Bend the rules as far as you can. Figure out who's responsible for this. And maybe you can do what I never could. Save these people. Save yourself. Well, for free become a trophy. You shall suffer for the sins of the one. Hmm. That's strange. Coming up on the PC Gaming Show. What's next for Killing Floor 2? <laughs> and an unannounced game from Tripwire Interactive. And now your host, Sean Plott. Our next game is a blast from the past. It's not a sequel or prequel or remake, but rather an entirely new game altogether. Let's take a look at Stardock's Star Control Origins. Long ago, the singularity formed, its creators uplifted into something beyond our understanding. These beings, now known as the Lexites, left Earth, <laughs> traveling to multiple planets in our solar system before vanishing altogether. This is why we are here. Welcome to Star Control, a state-of-the-art international space agency tasked with the exploration of our solar system and the defense of Earth. Here resides Star Trek, the world's <laughs> brightest minds and greatest technology, brought together by a strong curiosity to discover the unknown. Help us pioneer the future. Join today. Star Control has accelerated the construction of our new modular deep solar system vessel specifically for this mission. It's the fastest, most expensive ship humanity has ever made, Captain. I am Chief Viscosity Officer Windu of the Taiwan. This drive have evidently received traces of your radio uh. broadcasts themselves. <laughs> This definitely does not look like my kind of game. <laughs> a new game. It's just, I, I love open world. I love single. I love the, uh, you know, good story and all that. But we've heard so much about you. I don't know. I don't just. I just don't know how I feel about like these games that look like they're just meant for kids. They're afraid of losing their E rating. You know what I mean? 
joining me to talk about Star Control is the director of production at uh, Star Doc. Patrick this is going to be a long Shaw. show. Thanks for joining me on stage today, Patrick. Yeah, thanks for having me here. So I don't feel like, I don't feel like every up. single what game deserves Control a five-minute interview. So you know? Star Control is an open-universe action RPG. You can visit dozens of aliens, hundreds of different stars, thousands of different unique planets, and you can land on each and every one of them. And when you're driving around the planets, you can jump over canyons, uh, blast critters, and then you can venture out into the solar system and do ship-to-ship -ship combat with hostile aliens. And I, I want to ask, since I know that the story is a big part of this game, with it being open world, how do you make sure that the story still stays as the focus for the player? Yeah, so we're really excited about the story that we prepared for Star Control. It's funny, it's creative, um, but also has some dark, uh, sinister side to it. However, what we're very proud and very excited about is we have an infinite universe. That is, we are fully simulating the entire universe at all times. So even if you're on some oh, really? little moon in the corner of the universe, the aliens are still moving around the universe, doing their own thing, exploring and interacting with each other. So it's not just like at a That's planet, there's the same town whenever you visit. It depends on how the simulation has driven it forward. Right, exactly. Without, like, so over this is the this is uh, the infinite universe is in the the glue that connects my story, my adventure to the larger open galaxy. That's awesome. Now, I know modding is going to be a big part of Star Control Origins. How does the modding work? So what's your favorite science fiction show? Probably Firefly. Yeah, so what would you think of making Firefly season two? Shit, that's a lot of pressure, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> well, You're putting me on the spot on stage right now, yeah. We have uh, a week to do it, so. Um, but anyways, in Star Control Origins, you can create your own mm. ships, your own planets, your own galaxies. You can package up your adventures and share them with your friends online. So someone else can take care of Firefly season two. That's up to you. <laughs> now, last thing I want to ask about is how show. multiplayer works. Right. So in the Pretty game, we popular, have ship, to ship combat, and that turned about to be so popular in our early testing. They're like, we should make this our, it, a separate gameplay mode. So we did. We called it Fleet Battles. So you can create your own ships, you build them out of different pieces and parts, you attach different weapons and defenses, and then you go online to play them. You can either play local multiplayer, two people on the same machine, or online, ranked or online. Hmm, interesting. On PC, Where can people that go to pick up Star Control Origins? Well, right now, Star Control Origins is available for pre-order on GOG and Steam. Well, lovely. Guys, definitely be sure to head over to StarControlGame.com and check them out on Steam and GOG as well. And one more That's thing, right. we are happy to announce at the PC Gamer Show that uh, Star Control Origins is launching on September 20th, 2018. Look for it on September 20th. Now, our next game was PC Gamer's favorite game from E3 last year. It is Hunt Showdown from Crytek. Let's Hunt take a look Showdown. at what's coming for Hunt Showdown just after E3. I just registered for the open, for, for the, not the open beta, but for the beta of The Division 2. Wow, this game looks interesting. Uh, those graphics look great. Mm -hmm. who's here to tell me why fighting in massive mech suits is not about to go out of fashion any time soon. Guy, now Hellfire, in fact, sorry, Archangel, was originally a single-player narrative game, but Hellfire, this new edition, what changes is that going to make? Well, players really loved the single-player narrative, but they all kept telling us the same thing. They said, we really want it multiplayer, and we want it off-rails. And we kind of thought, that's a completely different Interesting. game. Interesting. But let's so give like it a shot. Monster Hunter World, uh, so Monster Hunter World together. multiplayer. Uh, they put something really <laughs> special. We got four maps. We got six different mechs. Tons of weapons where you could just blast through the environment and other mechs alike. And it's really just an amazing experience. You can zip around in your mech. You can tower over others. It's just something special. That and I can when try right now. is this coming out of early access? So you just said we can try it right now, but you've got the full version launching soon, right? Correct. Yeah, it's coming out in July 17th. 
Uh, but you could try it right now Very if you want nice. an early access. Help us iron out the kinks and uh, break some mechs along the process. Uh, I am no we'll good at ironing out the kinks of the PC guy, but you know? as a heavy mech woman, I can't wait for you to be my light mech wingman in that 2v2 PvP. So let's take a closer look at Archangel Hellfire. Let's do it. Destructible maps. That's what all we want to do. <laughs> Free roaming people. Our next no. title is one I've been looking read. forward to for quite some time. It's from the makers of Sherlock Holmes, and it's a delightful looking Lovecraftian okay. mystery. It's called The Sinking City, and joining me to talk about it is the community manager at Frogwares, Sergei Oganisyan. Welcome, Sergei. Thanks for joining me today. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you've earned a handshake. Yeah, you Welcome nailed that pronunciation. <laughs> I can't say that I've honestly branched I out too far into so the probably. world of indie games. You know, I want to ask right away the Sinking not, not City. Really. There's a lot of open world third What's person kind of type games. What makes franchises? the Sinking City different from what a player might expect? Well, I mean, the Sinking City is an open world action investigation game inspired by Lovecraft. And we believe that these okay. three elements already make the game pretty unique. And you know, when I say that you can be a not in, a, in a world, in a supernatural world full like of mystery it. and, you know, cosmic fear. Like, I really mean it, because investigations are really at the core of the Sinking City. Yeah, I mean, I know there's a lot of games in the open world genre that are focused on action, but you say investigation is at the core. What, what are investigation mechanics? What does it look like? So, the first thing you should know right off the bat is that we are not going to offer any hand-holding for the player. We will <laughs> not give you any clear objectives in your diary or, you know, markers on the map telling you where to go or what to do. It's actually up to you to figure Sounds that like it's out. Sounds like going to suck a Instead, little bit on your first try. You know, <laughs> Hints, well, uh, evidence, like clues, crime scenes to examine, like people to talk to, suspects to question. Mm -hmm. And we will ask you in return to use your wits and your intuition to, you know, experiment mm -hmm. with so your you findings, get to be you know, the maybe inspector. like find a way how to progress. And what you should also know is that finding these clues will not only help you understand what's going on and, you know, uh, yeah. get a better understanding of the world and its people, but it will also help you maybe change the course of your investigation. You know, you mentioned the world itself. I mean, the footage that I've seen through the years has just been absolutely beautiful. Talk to me about the world that we're in and what investigation is at the core. So the game takes place in this fictional city of Oakmont in the state of Massachusetts. You know, the city which is flooded. There is a terrible disaster going on which has claimed like thousands of lives. And also, like, it seems like it awakened frightening monsters which now yeah. roam the streets of Oakmont. You know, people mm. that live in the city, they are very different, like different social classes, uh, gangs, cultists poor people, rich people, but they are all yeah. united by fear, you know, they are all afraid, maybe except for the cultists, of course, they are all <laughs> afraid that, uh, uh, you know, for their lives, because of the flood, because of the monsters, and you know, we actually want to understand what's going on, we want to understand what lies be behind this ostensibly supernatural uh, force flood, and what's even funny is that while everybody is afraid, nobody wants to leave, but this is kind of a different story. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, we've talked a little bit about the story world and how it's inspired by Lovecraft. What about the game mechanics? You've mentioned the sanity mechanic in the past. Indeed, we do have a sanity mechanic which, which directly impacts gameplay. You know, when our hero is under a lot of stress, when he sees like something supernatural, something disturbing, or even when he's making a choices in the story which he's not comfortable with making, Sounds like uh, a cool you know, idea, he will begin to lose his sanity. Uh, he's like, he will start to have hallucinations, he will start to hear distorted sounds, yeah which will allow the player to understand that something is actually going wrong. Maybe we need to, you know, step back and do something about that. As of right now, we're still fine-tuning this mechanic because we are still looking, you know, for the sweet spot between yeah. impact on the gameplay and impact on the story. Since we're almost out of time, I still just have to ask, <laughs> what are the sweet monsters that we're going to get to see in the game? Oh, we have different kinds of monsters. We have different kinds of archetypes, you know, with different abilities. And, you know, we actually give you tools. The game is not about fighting monsters. Investigation is the right. core of the game. But we give you tools to defend yourself. So we give you weapons, we give you skills, <laughs> we give you even <laughs> certain, like, traps. In return, we ask you that yeah. you make a decision, because the game is about making a decision. Uh, ammunition is scarce, and you will have to adjust your tactics accordingly. So, I know a lot of people have all sorts of questions about what the game is like. Where can they go to find out more information? Uh, so, if you're hungry for more, you can always follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, this is where we post our updates regularly. Facebook, The Sinking City Game. YouTube, uh, Frogwares. Uh, so, go there, and yeah. like, this is definitely the place to go if you want to learn more.
Well, I'm super excited personally to see how it turns out. Thanks for joining me on stage, Sergey. Mm -hmm. The Sinking City. Now, our next game is a PC title that has only gotten better over the last few years, and I'm always excited to hear what they have in store. Mm -hmm. Frankie is up on the balcony with the developers Impress of me. Warframe. Talk to me, Frankie. Warframe. Well, we all know the PC is home to some of the most devoted communities. I haven't played Warframe. And one of the best. I know my cousin loves it. Belongs to Warframe. Maybe two of my cousins. Last year, the game got this my brothers have tried it. Update, Planes of Eidolon, and the next epic cinematic quest is supposedly it's <laughs> it's a it's a Mega Grinder. And I know if Santa were here, he would just say, like, his dad plays this a lot. So, I don't know. I guess some people like this type. This is a DLC for it, I guess. But the Warframe community is really excited for this, but for all of us who have not played it, the sacrifice. Megan for all of us who have not played it, we're just like, okay. Extremes joins me now. Megan, tell me more about the sacrifice. So the sacrifice is the latest installment of our cinematic quest. It continues a story that we started in the second dream, continued with the war within, and then apostasy prologue. So at the end of last year, we kind of shattered some hearts and uh, left them with a bit of a plot twist. And I'm not going to spoil mm -hmm. it for people who want to maybe catch up. Uh, but what I can say is that obviously from the trailer that you saw, the wait for Umbra, the three-year wait, the Umbra Warframe is finally over. Uh, the creepy guy at the end of the trailer there, Ballas, plays a pretty big role in this quest. And uh, again, not going to spoil a lot, but I can say that it's coming this week on PC. And wow. you guys are actually currently waiting. If I were, well, if I were a Warframe fan, fan, I'd be <laughs> really excited right now. now. Yes, so it's going to be another big year for us, and I'm really excited for it. Well, let's take a look at last year's event to get an idea of what Tenacon is all about. What do you think the mega reveal at Tenno Live is going to be? Can you tell me you think about this this Umber thing that's maybe going on or whatever? There you go. <laughs> Called it. <laughs> it was pretty amazing. Like, it's a whole new direction for Warframe and all this. You got all these other games coming out, but this one's free. When's 2018 happening? Get it started. Tenno. Next month Given we're doing their that festival. The community knows you as Auntie Megan. Oh my god. It must be huge for you to be at Tenacon. Tenacon is really special for really everyone that works at Digital Extremes. The developers pour their heart and soul into what we do for Tenacon. And I know for me it was literally like the best day of my entire career. I know Rebecca, our community director <laughs> at home, was watching. Um, but last year when we did the Planes of Eidolon, you know, open world expansion reveal. Uh, Rev and I were actually doing that as a live demonstration in front of everyone, and we had practiced it for months, and it went as flawlessly as we could have ever hoped for. And we actually, like, as people were cheering, it's pitch black on stage. Oh Rev and I look at each other, and we just kind of fist pump and both started crying because we didn't crash the demonstration. Uh, so if you wa <laughs> if you watched it live this year, if you're there, uh, you can definitely probably count on some tears and some emotions because it's it's a really big day for us. So basically bring tissues, right? Bring tissues for yourself, for me, for everyone involved because there will be some tears probably. But um, if you can't get to Tenacon because unfortunately it is sold out, how can you watch it online? So on twitch.tv slash you can definitely uh. check it out. And uh, PC Gamer is also hosting as well on their Facebook and Twitter. And you get free stuff by watching Twitch? You do. So if you want to link your uh, Warframe account to your Twitch account, and all you have to do is watch and get some free stuff. Fantastic. So that's happening from July 7th, and you'll be able to watch Tenacon Live through PC Gamer's Twitch channel and the Facebook page. Thank you, Auntie Megs. Oh. Sean, it's over to you. Thank you, Frankie, and thank you, Warframe. Mm. The next name is one I grew up with, Sega. They've become a prolific <laughs> publisher of Sega. Japanese they're still alive. Known for their fully featured ports, especially beloved by this guy on the left. <laughs> Sega's bringing shining resonance both to PC and console the same day, and Shenmue is going to be coming later okay. this year. They have all sorts of games I've, coming I've up. Let's take a look at what <laughs> Sega's got in store. Yeah. 
Yeah. You're super Japanese. How does Bayonetta? I think Santa said he might try that one. Personally, I'm just not an anime fan. Not to just make one all-inclusive sweeping statement about Japanese-related games or Sega games, but... I don't know. Just, again, not for me. Uh, boy, I hope, like... So far, I mean, there just really hasn't been anything that's really been personally interesting to me. This show. I was a whole lot more excited for the Ubisoft show. And I think Sony, I, I'm, hopefully some, there'll be some cool stuff in Sony. Since we have the PS4, we're always looking for cool stuff to get there. I love how easy it is to stream up the PS4, so... <laughs> Yakuza <laughs> Zero is available for pre-order right now and will be releasing on Steam in early August. We hope you've been enjoying the show thus far. We have so much more great mm. stuff to come. Let's see what's coming up at this year's yeah, PC I'm, Gaming I'm Show. I'm bored at this one. Coming up on the PC Gaming Show, a new publisher reveals three new games and the first ever gameplay footage of Overkill's The Walking Dead. And now your host, Sean That looks a lot less cartoony than it used to. And I'm back. Our next guest is a regular here at the PC Gaming Show, having attended all four years. Frankie's with him up in the balcony. It's Tripwire. Sean, if you are anything like me, you probably need to let off steam every once in a while. And I personally can't think of a better way to do it than by kicking back and tearing up a load of monstrous enemies. It's kind of either that or pushing the office photocopier out of the window, and I, for one, prefer the option that keeps me and everyone here in a job. With that in mind, I am thrilled to welcome Bill Monk from Killing Floor 2 back to E3. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> Got a lot of fans in the Killing audience. Killing Floor, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've heard of that one. They <laughs> all want to know what the latest from Tripwire and Killing Floor 2 is. Yep, we've been really busy working on Killing Floor. And we got some uh we got four major updates that are coming out this year the first one we dropped in march and we're getting ready to drop the next one really soon coming tomorrow but what involved yeah so we're bringing the summer sideshow back but this time we're mixing circus freaks with steampunk in a really fun exciting way and we have a really cool new uh system that we're adding it's called the weapon upgrade system and with this there's 73 different weapons that we have in our game and each one you can uh, upgrade it and make it viable for late play so it really adds a lot of creativity to your loadout. So I'm really excited to get that in people's hands. So you can make your boy, your boy guns big. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Good. Well, thank you so much for joining us thank today, you. Bill. Let's take a look at the trailer for Treacherous Skies Summer Shy Show. Fire. Welcome aboard the HMS Queen Victoria, ladies and gents. Ring me the lock. <laughs> I'm speaking to you from, well, someplace very safe. Yes, you helped me escape that fray at my beloved Steam Land, but now I need your help once again. Matter. I've got to get to my island in the channel. Now, now, listen up. I don't know how, but these blasted circus freaks followed us <laughs> on board. The I heck? think it's time to put on a show. It's like Call of Duty Zombies, who says not. <laughs> <and horrendous bloodshed. laughs> 
To the crew. What's this woman go? Seems Mrs. Foster negotiated her way on board and is set on giving Zen the angry top business. And remember, I wonder what we'll Santa see you about all these the airship. Fossey, joke for you. Optician says my eyes are okay. I say, then how do you explain my husband? <laughs> As is tradition, the content that you just saw will be available tomorrow, including a free weekend for PC this weekend. Definitely check it out with Killing Floor 2. But that's not all that Tripwire has. I have the president of Tripwire himself, John Gibson, on stage. John, welcome back again. Thanks, Sean. Pleasure to be here. Now, I understand that Tripwire is stepping into also doing publishing. What does that entail? That's hmm. right. So, Sean, well, it's really challenging for developers right now with the thousands of games that are coming out every year. Yeah. It's really hard to get noticed. Mm -hmm. And then you have yeah. the traditional publishing That's the problem deals. With most indie so games. We're giving developers fair deals. We're going to be helping them rise above that noise so they can get noticed. Right. And because of our experience developing our own games and publishing our own yeah. games, we're going to help them with marketing, funding, mentoring, feedback. To help them succeed. Oh, for any, yeah, I mean, anybody who's thinking about trying to become a game uh, uh, game road designer, designer, that's that part is of right. exciting I'm news. happy to announce that we're going to be publishing Road Redemption. We're going to be helping them grow and succeed even more on Steam, but also bring the franchise beyond Steam. Now, I know today you have a world exclusive mm -hmm. new game, hasn't been announced we yet. We do, nobody knows. Before we roll the trailers, so why don't you give me a little bit of a tease? Yeah, so. We're working with the team at Blindside Games, mm -hmm. uh, and they're led by Alex Quick. Oh, yeah, right. So if you're familiar with the Killing Floor universe, you know Alex Quick was the modder that created the original Killing Floor mod, which Tripwire worked uh -huh. with Alex to bring commercial. I didn't know that. And then Alex went off, assembled his own team, made the yeah. game Depth, which was sharks and humans fighting each other, very, very successful. Hmm. And now it's come full circle. We're working with Alex again, and we're going to bring his all-new game to market. Well, let's take a look at it right now. World exclusive new upcoming game from Tripwire. All right, let's see what this is about. Close your eyes and imagine a Close place my eyes. I'm about to see this. where the sun <laughs> is bright and the beaches are white. A place filled with southern charm where the water is as warm as the welcome. So come feel the wind in your sails. Kick back and relax. Enjoy the local cuisine. Your dream vacation is waiting this for you. This is like that one game, Hungry Shark, on mobile devices. I think that's what this is. Is Hungry Shark coming to PC and console? Go to maneatergame.com now to book your vacation. Maneater? That's definitely just the PC by. version of Hungry Shark. <laughs> <laughs> so, Everyone's so, hey, it. John, so you get to play as the shark. You are the shark. <laughs> what? What? This is an open world action RPG where you play as a shark, <laughs> or as we like to call it, a shark PG. Oh, nice. Oh, okay, so. <laughs> So do you like upgrade and improve the shark? Is there like skill trees? You do. There is a shark skill tree. Really? Everyone's just laughing like, is this for real? There is a full single player campaign. You eat your way through it. You get bigger teeth. You can jump out of the water and snatch people off piers and all of that fun stuff. I, I didn't realize this was a power fantasy I needed so badly. <laughs> now, where can what people go heck? to get more information about it? They can go to maneatergame.com. All right, I doubt anyone will forget that here. <laughs> That's maneatergame.com. John, thanks so much for joining me on stage. And once My again, pleasure. all the content that Tripwire That's weird. showcased earlier about Killing Floor 2 and Road Redemption will be playable here at E3. Definitely 
be sure to check it out. Coming up next, Frankie has a whole slew of unannounced games. Frankie. Cheers, Sean. Man eats a looking tasty there, and I can't believe I named the game after my favorite weekend activity. Indies are at the heart of PC gaming, and next up is a brand new publisher revealing three games for the very first time, releasing one of them, Behave Yourselves Audience, today. So let's take a look. Untitled publisher. <laughs> oh, this is this is the company who said that they're going to be helping. Ah, no, never mind. Wait. wait. <laughs> Untitled. I wonder what it's like to be a publisher company. All the hand drawn animations. <laughs> Viewer, because I just uh, uh, for a minute I was about to call this like a um, look like Minecraft and you're going to food. <laughs> it's a farming game. I don't think I know anything about what that game is supposed to be. Kind of confused. Alright. It's like, it's like, this one looks a lot more arcade style. Like must plays and overwhelmed uh, the final game of the bunch is available on steam sorry, right disagree. now with a special launch discount so make you sure you check that out after the show and if you're at e3 this week head over to the pc gamer corner of the facebook booth inside the south hall to give overwhelm a try right next up it's time for us all to take a holiday and where better than a virtual resort with some truly spectacular wildlife Back again this year, our friends of the show, Frontier Development, with a unique take on the park management genre. I am, of course, talking about Jurassic World Evolution. The long-awaited game is out tomorrow and lets you build your own dinosaur-style tourist trap. Does it track. game? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Unleash the gold blum! You think that things are gonna turn out differently, huh? Well, the ones before you did, too. Because they believed that they were in control. Uh, did I hear about and this? And control... Well, 
Here's the thing. Humanity is desperate for it. We are seduced by it. It's not the same voice Deceived by the, the illusion theory. of it. But we never really possess it. Because if there's anything that chaos theory has taught us, mm, chaos theory. Explain it's that mm -hmm. nature is on its own course. <laughs> and when we interfere, when humanity tries to put nature into orderly boxes, chaos destroys them. And what makes us such unique creatures is knowing the scope and power of what we're up against and still believing that we can win. <laughs> yeah, I can see the sub there is like the subliminal message. I know, however, Park movies. what I would <laughs> predict. Tomorrow. So excited for that game. Our next title is from Insomniac, who've been making amazing games for years, and they're Insomniac. going to try to take that their expertise familiar. and answer the question How do you make an open world game in VR? Let's take a look at their huh. upcoming game, Stormland. Looks like a VR game. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of an open world VR game that does sound interesting. I don't have any we don't have anything for VR though. It's a cool idea, but I don't think VR is quite as publicly accessible as everyone thinks it is right now. Super unaffordable. I saw an ad for uh, the Microsoft HoloLens VR goggles. It's like three thousand dollars still. And some of them I've heard are cheaper, but. Pretty epic sounding. <laughs> I do like the I, I do like how people are still pushing virtual reality. I think I don't think I said it's it's definitely not its full potential yet, but I am excited to see what the future holds for that area of gaming. I do kind of believe it'll be like the future. We're not we're not quite there yet. Joining me to talk about Stormland is the Chief Creative Officer at Insomniac Games. Join me in welcoming Chad Desern. Another few minute interview. Hey Chad, welcome to <sighs> the stage. Thank you. I want to start right away and ask, what is this game all about? Well, in Stormland, you play question. as an android gardener. And uh, an gardener? entity called the Tempest uproots your habitat and shatters your android body. 
So you've got no. to travel to a civilization above the Thunderheads to repair yourself and save your friends. And I want to ask what open world means in VR. Yeah. Well, for us, it's about giving the player the ability to explore the world freely with a set of Android movement abilities that are designed to yeah. give you complete agency. Yeah, because yeah. that's always a huge question I have is how does motion work in any VR title? Yeah, well, um, in Stormland, you can do things like fly just above the slipstream with your outstretched Android hands. Yeah. Um, you can shoot a laser into the cloud surface and then make a ramp, kick off of that, um, climb up a cliffside, like literally launching yourself with your synthetic Android strength, and then like push off and <laughs> glide back down using your hands to control your descent. Just it's massive freedom of movement, yeah. Th that's it, it's this set of mechanics that are designed together to work fluidly so that um, movement feels exhilarating yeah. and uh, you, you can kind of take the world at your own pace with it. I'm curious why VR for this type of title? There, there are a series of things that we're doing with Stormland that, that we could only do in VR. Um, it's about the, the expressiveness of having tracked head and hands and yeah. how we use that yeah. for combat, how we use it for movement, um, even things like scavenging technology to attach it to your body. Like you look down, you get a new piece of tech and you, you attach it right into <laughs> your arm. And then, you know, suddenly you've got the ability to harness electricity yeah. or cloak yourself or all kinds of different cool Android abilities. I mean, the, the art is just There's beautiful, the footage that we've seen. I wonder if you could talk to me a little bit about the world and what it means for it to be ever changing. Yeah, that's, that, that's a really good question. So that entity called the Tempest rearranges everything every single week so that we present the player with new playgrounds of movement and, and combat and scavenging. Yeah. And you never know what you're gonna discover. So every single island you find yeah. has the potential to ha hide an enemy stronghold or a network of underground caverns or brand new tech to scan. That's awesome. Yeah. Now I gotta ask, where can we go for more information? Well, um, you can uh, stay tuned uh, by watching um, the So uh, maybe the point of this whole game PC with, um, gaming Ash show is Land just VR, to... Or you can check us out at insomniac.games. Raise awareness. Really forward, but thanks for joining me, Chad, once again. <laughs> uh, for indie developers and try to get their name out there. Information. Frankie's up in the balcony with our next absolutely gorgeous looking indie title. It really is, John, because next up we've got a first look at a new game from publisher Raw Fury, a neo-noir detective drama featuring a Paris cabbie who finds himself drawn into a world of crime. Sacre Roddy Bleu. Yes, I speak French. I can't wait for this <laughs> one, so let's take a ride with the trailer. It's a French title? Interesting style of graphics. Going games off you traces. That's cool. If you like that hmm. last game, you'll definitely love our next one. It's from the exact same publisher, Raw Fury. It's an open world narrative focused game with an okay. incredible art style. Let's take a look at Sable. Sable. Sounds interesting. Sounds like comic book style. Wow. 
Wow, this is, this is like a really interesting art style. It's even, even a little bit more cartoony than Borderlands 1 was. Sable. Interesting. Joining me to talk about Sable is pretty much the entire core development team on stage. It's Daniel mm -hmm. Feinberg and I Greg to hear more about this one. I want to immediately ask, what kind of game is Sable? What can we expect? <laughs> uh, Sable is an open world desert exploration game. It's not a game about desert combat or about leveling up. It's a game about solitude and it's a game about exploration. Uh, you play as Sable, a girl leaving her home uh, to explore this world filled with monumental architecture, fallen spaceships, and you'll travel around hmm. on your hover bike learning about the people, the culture, and the history of this uh, world. And you know, I, I, I talked about it before, I think this art style is amazing. W where's the origins of this? So we were really heavily inspired by the clear lines style of French and Belgian comics, mm -hmm. as well as Japanese yeah. animation. Um, particularly Studio Ghibli. So um, we really want to feel our players to feel the same sense of wonder that you get from watching one of their films. And so from yeah. the very beginning, we, we knew that we really needed to nail the visual style. And uh, yes, yeah, so we put a lot of time and sort of effort into our right. rendering system. Uh, and yeah, we're really pleased to be able to show it to everyone. Yeah. And I mean, I know that you two consist of most of the core development, the, the art and the programming. What about the music that was in that trailer? Yeah, so that was a new track by Japanese Breakfast. Oh, yeah, the t-shirt. Yes, yeah. of course. Yeah, Got a t-shirt. Uh, <laughs> Michelle, um, she is doing the soundtrack for the game. Um, Japanese Breakfast is one of my favorite bands right now. Uh, it's incredible to have well, that. It, it all just came together so beautifully in the trailer. And I know that you guys yeah. are really regular about updating, you know, blogs, sharing what's going on with the development. What are you guys thinking of this game so uh, far? So they can go to our Twitter account. Or any of the games. Have any of them stuck out to you? To Lovely gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me. Once again, the name of the game is Sable. Our next title is one that has been in development, even showing up in our very first PC gaming show. It's Cloud Imperium Games still hard at work on their hmm. title, Star Citizen. Let's see what oh, we have in store. <laughs> I went during Bethesda's show and they announced Starfield. Everyone is, I saw some comments on Facebook, people were saying, it's Star Sit, I mean Starfield. And then somebody else said, I think Star Citizen is starting to sound like a scam to me. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Maybe it's just because this was announced and I don't know. Okay, let's see what this looks like. All footage captured in engine. It looks pretty good. Looks pretty impressive so far. Okay. Dang, this is, I mean, this looks really good for an indie game. That looks really impressive. Hmm. That looks interesting. Perfect Alpha 3.2. Oh, is it already out? Coming up on the PC gaming I know show. That. All new gameplay footage of Just Cause just 4. Four. A closer look at The Walking Dead, the final season. All new okay. gameplay footage of Hitman. And now yeah, your host, Sean Plot. As we do <laughs> each year at the PC Gaming Show, in addition to talking about games, we're also going to talk about some of the upcoming hardware trends. To join me in talking about it is the senior brand manager from Acer. It's Eric Ackerson. Thanks for joining me up here, Eric. Sean, really excited to be here. 
Now, I, I just want to straight up ask, what are the, some of the big trends that consumers can be expecting right now? Well, right now we're developing some new products, particularly in the display space. We want to take the experience to the next level. To help with that, one of our new products is the Predator X27. It's an incredible gaming display. For instance, it's 4K and 120 hertz refresh. The users can overclock to 144. But what, re what really takes it over to the next level is the inclusion of G-Sync HDR. Yeah, now I hear a lot about HDR. Can you explain a little more in detail what that is and what that means? Well, there's a, quite a bit that goes into it, but uh, for the purpose of this conversation, the fact that there are 384 individual backlit zones, so the backlighting can be individually controlled, really bright, very dark. It makes a, a better contrast on screen. Wow. Each of them are individually controlled. The brightness of the screen is far above a typical display. Typical, you're looking at 300 to 400 nits. We're looking at 600 with the Predator X27 with a max of 1,000 nits. And you know, some of the yeah. titles that were showcased uh, just now, there's a wide variety of some are, but... realistic, some with a really iconic art style. How does HDR contribute to that big range? Uh, that pretty good. Well, one of the big things that helps is the color gamut that's available with these displays. We're able to do 99% of the Adobe color gamut, so it's better representing the vision wow. of the art director. Yeah, and some Down of the games the that you see on screen that support K. HDR, Mass Effect Andromeda, Far Cry 4, and Nino Kuni 2. Uh, again, you won't see them in HDR right now unless you have an HDR wow. monitor. It doesn't work so 4K out. It's, just, to you, but, it's going farther. You know, it brings me to one of my next questions about PC gamers tend to have a huge range of possible budgets. What are the different sort of products to look for at those price ranges? Wow. Well, I mean, we cover the, the gamut from uh, very simple and to the point to high performance esports products or multi view surround multi display products. But we also go really crazy sometimes. We decide. <laughs> We put our engineers to the test. What can you do if you have yeah, no yeah. limit? So one of the projects we've worked on is something called the Predator 21X. This is a 21-inch curved screen uh, laptop with a mechanical keyboard. A How do you use graphics laptop? cards? Yeah. Science. We, uh, materials. <laughs> we, did, we did a really good thing. But you know what? To, to be serious, not just to joke, we actually have to ship this with a Pelican case to protect the laptop. And it sells yeah. for $9,000. Oh. And we sold every single unit we could make. That's so, so we cover much. every spectrum of gaming. You know, you brought up this Holy Predator cow. laptop, you brought up the Predator monitors at the start of this segment. Where can people go to hear more about or even pick one up once they stop being sold out? So the, that's the good news is that we're shipping now. Our customers, partners are rich. selling them. The bad news is a few have already sold out of this new Predator X27 Ooh. monitor. I believe Micro Center is still in stock. Amazon will be in stock again soon. Well, thank you so much for joining yeah. me on stage, Eric. Frankie is awaiting in the balcony Wait, with our very that. next title. <laughs> the PC has always been the platform for crazy ideas. In our next game, Genesis Alpha 1, you build and manage a space vessel, farm resources, deal with terrifying alien infestations, and explore a vast, randomly generated universe. Oh, and you can take DNA from the aliens you encounter across the galaxy, splice them with members of your crew to create new life forms. <laughs> Just a typical day at the office. Let's take a look. Greetings, Commander. Genesis Alpha 1. You have been sent to Quadrant Alpha 1. The mission is to find a new home for the crew on board of this ship. Expand your ship and explore the galaxy for resources and interesting new life forms. Feel free to experiment with DNA and mm -hmm. alien abilities to maximize crew efficiency. Ready your weapons. Like a dead space game, kind of. Cool map style, like that. That's interesting. Man. Now, if you didn't catch the pre show quiz, you might be wondering who my buddy is. Well, this. Ladies and gentlemen, is Webster from Drake's Cakes, one of the PC gaming show sponsors oh this year. And he's got a cool competition for you, the Drake's Cakes Packs Giveaway. Oh yes, packs 
is a gathering of PC and tabletop games, concerts, panels, exhibits and tournaments. It's like a four-day LAN party, festival, workshop and concert rolled into one. <laughs> the very lucky winner will enjoy a trip to PAX West, including two tickets and a free trip to Seattle. So if that's you, hit me up on those dates, because I am free. Website, my man duck, this is very generous of you indeed. And by entering, guys, you will get a discount code to get your hands on some delicious Drake's Cakes available on Amazon. And if you're at E3 itself, don't forget you can meet Webster in person at the E3 Concourse Walkway, where he'll be giving away Drake's swag and tasty treats all week. So if you see him, give him a fist bump <laughs> on my behalf. I'll take one now. Thank you very much, Webster. So if you have ever dreamt of spending a weekend knee deep in one of Earth's best gaming festivals, visit PCGamer.com forward slash Drake's Cakes and enter now for a chance to win and hang out with Webster. All right, Webster, all this hosting has got me a bit peckish. How about we look at a trailer for the next edition of Clay Entertainment's beloved survival series, Don't Starve, Hamlet. Don't Starve, Hamlet. I mean, another Don't Starve game. <laughs> I haven't played this before, but Gert has. I think he enjoys it. The game's called Don't Starve, but it should, it's more like, don't go insane. Our next title is the next installment in a series that never fails <laughs> to make me laugh. It's Just Cause 4, Just and they have a brand new engine to bring the level of delicious insanity one notch up. Let's Michael take a look Bay. at what the Apex engine in Just Cause 4 can really do. A new engine, okay, that makes sense. Nice. Joining me wow. to talk about it on stage now from Avalanche Studios, it's Francesco and, or excuse me, Francesco Antolini and Adam Davidson. Gentlemen, welcome. Talk to me about the tornado. <laughs> it's fantastic, isn't it? So it's uh, a very nice uh, piece of tech. It's not just beautiful, but thanks to Apex, it's also a bit boy that actually works. It's fully physicalized. Yeah. This means that it's roaming the world wreaking havoc and uh it's not it's not just like a background piece it's no, actually impacting no, no. the yeah. world this is you. just cause man you go there and you play with it yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know throughout the trailers that i've seen it seems to be a lot of different environments that are available throughout can you talk to me about those yeah i mean uh one of the most important things to us with this installment of just cause was bringing a lot more variety into the game and that extends to a lot of things but certainly the biomes of the game so instead of one kind of region of like, say, Southern Italy, like we had last time, now you have lush rainforests, deserts, uh, grassland, and even alpine biomes, wow. uh, all of which you know, are rendered beautifully with the new Apex engine. Now, cool. something that's very important to me is some of my favorite features from Just Cause 3. Can you talk to me about 
like the wingsuit, the grappling hooks. Like, are those coming back in Just Cause 4? Everything you love from Just Cause 3 is back. Good. But Good. everything Good. is also <laughs> just better. There's more to do, more to discover. For example, the grappling hook is completely custom customizable. Uh, the combat model has been completely reworked, redesigned, enhanced, so new weapon, new enemies, uh, new AI. Uh, we've got extreme weather that yeah. interacts with I mean, grappling hook does, and yeah, uh, parachute. Right? The wind that we saw from yes. the tornado, is it just yes. like basic wind effects also get incorporated as well? Again, it just goes, so nothing, just an effect. So there is wind, it's <laughs> physics, and acts with your parachute, grappling hook. So and great. Is, yeah. Well, where can people go to get some maybe that uh, we'll call it first hand footage maybe of we will have to give just because uh, uh, they can check it out at justcause.com forward slash e3 in uh for three days that's right believe it or not e3 hasn't started yet <laughs> starts tomorrow so yep. june 12th through 14th you can check it out thanks so much for joining thanks us so on stage yeah, looking forward to the hilarity of just cause 4. Now, our next title is one of my all-time favorite IPs. I can't wait for Frankie to talk to you about The Walking Dead. Okay. Overkill Software it's and Star Blaze um, and the creators of Exciting to turn, and you know, to the Walking Dead fan Therefore, base. Therefore, it goes without saying that these studios are some of the most talented I've only seen makers one episode of Walking, of Walking Dead. <laughs> and their next one is set in a familiar but new apocalyptic Washington, D.C. Here's the first gameplay footage right for Overkill's The Walking Dead. And keep your eyes peeled for the release date at the end. So many things. Husbands and wives, doctors and teachers, writers and architects. But when the world ended, all that ended too. Every day we fight for more than survival. We fight to build a new life. Good news for fans of The Walking Dead. Overkill's game for The Walking Dead, of course, coming soon. But we have a second, completely different Walking Dead game that we're getting the chance to talk about right really? now. This is Telltale's The Walking Dead, the oh. final season. Joining me on stage to talk about it is the lead writer, James Windler, and the voice of Clementine herself, Melissa Hutchison. Okay. Thanks for joining me on the stage. Our pleasure. Thank you. Now, I, I want to ask right away for, you know, people who've played through the first three seasons of The Walking Dead, in Try terms of the much. gameplay, what's some of the familiar and what's some of the new? Okay, so for people who don't know Telltale, um, we are a story-based company. Um, we do, we focus on narrative. Uh, we've had our roots in um, the, the old school point and click adventure games, but we've developed our own cinematic style and um, almost yeah. a signature um, mechanic, like our choice wheel. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's all familiar. Um, that should, you know, the choices branch the narrative. Um, what's new this year, we have um, like, traditionally like combat and action. Um, we've done with QTEs and, yeah, yeah, like swipes <laughs> and, and button mashes and all of that. This year, um, with the final season, we're, we're um, introducing uh, segments of unscripted combat. Yeah, see, we see some of this right here. Okay. Yeah, so Clem probably just brutalizes on me there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course she is. 
And you, oh yeah, so yeah, we also they just have, have like a difficult the, um, part the of the telltale game, like the over even though like, they give you the freedom uh, of so choice a lot, like our players, um, sometimes uh, they, just, they do need to direct you, you and not, see from the, you know, the right. Um, is like kind of they're looking kind of really, really good with this yeah. graphic, bla um, graphic black art style that we're playing. Yeah, because in the previous games it was much more of a directed camera from scene to scene, but now you can really sort of That's explore I mean. the environment yes. on your own. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Mm. And, yeah. Now, I want to ask okay. about the story. I mean, Telltale Games always have that as the central feature. Where does The Walking Dead, the final season, start off? Okay, so it starts, um, we've, you know, Clementine has been on the road for a long time. We are post-time jump in the comics. Mm -hmm. um, she's been on the road, she's traveling um, with a, uh, AJ, who is an orphaned boy, yeah. um, who is the closest thing that she has to family, um, but they're reaching the end of it. They are like running out of steam on the road, it's like proving to be untenable. Um, so um, the final season, Clementine uh, discovers a, a, a school, a secluded school, um, where there are no adults, um, and essentially, sees that this might be a place that they could call home. Yeah, and what are the sort of challenges hmm. that she's going to face throughout the season? Oh, all kinds of challenges, yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> zombie threat all the That's time. Tough. Yeah, of course. Um, and then there's always the external threat. Like the, uh, at some point, there are going to be adults coming in um, representing external threats that she's going to have to deal with. Now, Melissa, I, I want to ask what your experience has been like, because it's rare to have, mm -hmm. you know, a, a voice actress journey along with yeah. a character in a multi-year journey. I mean, how long ago was the first I was, recording that you did? Well, I, it was 2012, but we might have even started in 2011. I don't know. I, we're not going to do math on air. Yeah, That's we're not always doing a math. bad idea. That's not happening right now. Um, it's been a long time, and it's not only just playing one character. It's actually been aging with her, growing with her, and uh, falling deeper and deeper in love with her. And, uh, you know, starting as this young child who's, you know, as playing as Lee, it's your job to protect her, and then organically moving through all these seasons, and now... Yeah. You're playing as Clementine. I mean, really, this is a fan-driven game, so this final season is for the fans, and, mm, you know, you're going to be playing as Clementine and protecting AJ, and uh, this is just near and dear to my heart. And, yeah, I mean, yeah. how do you feel about the fact that this is the end? Ah, well, <laughs> well, I mean, it's bittersweet. I'm super sad. I'm super psyched. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm, of course, it'll, it'll be sad to end her journey, yeah. but uh, I... I'm really looking forward. Obviously, I'm surrounded by talent with Telltale Games, and I have no doubt that the writers and the creatives are going to crush it. So, sad but happy? It's all very confusing. I'm a very confused <laughs> human right yeah. now. Let's I just put that like. Usually, I'm someone who's played through all the Telltale the Walking Dead series. games. I would love to know when the final season is coming out. August 14th. Um, yeah, we ship August 14th, and it's available for pre-order right now. Be sure to check it out. Thank you so much for joining me on stage Thank today. You. Once again, that's thewalkingdeadgame.com, or you can find it on Steam as well. All right. Well, for our next title, maybe that Frankie, you. we're going to head back to you on the balcony. Next up, have I got a treat for you? Coming straight out of Finland from Nola Games is a magical action roguelike that asks, "Is that a wand in your pocket? Or are you just trying to kill me?" Don't let the retro art style fool you. Noita is set in a procedurally generated world where every pixel is physically simulated. Let's take a look. Hmm? So that is a, like a dungeon crawler. is one that's very near and dear to my heart as it is the spiritual successor to one of my favorite childhood games, Beam Hospital. Joining me to talk about it are the two founders Beam of Two Point Hospital. Studios to talk about Two Point Hospital. Join me in welcoming Dr. Webley and Dr. Carr. Does it not sound familiar? Beam Hospital? Wow. 
great suits. I know mean, I gotta ask, as two fully trained medical professionals, how does one run a hospital in Two Point Hospital? Wait, oh my gosh, is the stethoscope eliminating your microphone? Oh, you know what? We do it every year. Come here, talk to me. Okay. How do we run a hospital? <laughs> so the Two Point Hospital is a game about designing and uh, building your own hospital. It's yeah. In, uh, talk directly at my tie. Talk, yeah. This is, you said don't talk there. Yeah. I've got to look out here, you said. Yeah, no, just look so, straight at the ground. There's a lot of customization. <laughs> there's... Is this not working at all? Yeah, it's great. Uh, it's been great. Carry, carry on. on. Well, carry on then. Uh, yeah, a lot of customization, a lot of interesting characters in our world, which... Uh, with all these different characters, we had to come up with some really interesting illnesses and cures for them. And okay. uh, you have fun it's in two point sim. county exploring sim different regions happy to mark that one and curing again, people with different bingo. ailments. And as you can see on the screen, we've got on. so this is real. We actually uh, researched this. It's uh, mm -hmm. a certain anima. And also, you can train people. Uh, you can uh, train your doctors to be better, your nurses to be better. Do research so you can unlock new wonderful cures. Yeah. You know, there. So this is so like yeah, everyone's, gonna, like everyone's gonna remember this. Yeah, so I mean, no, look, tell, tell me about it. Like, <laughs> this game what is the, the sort of problem. late game <laughs> yeah, sort of experience that you'll be playing through? Because this looks like it's quite deep into the running of a hospital. Yeah, this is later on. So uh, you start off and you're, you're you know, you're, you're researching and you're, you're training up staff, you're diagnosing illnesses, and uh, you're hopefully curing them and making money and then yeah. coming off. I see this malady. Yeah, I see this malady called turtle head. Can you explain oh, yes. a little bit about what yeah. that is? Yes, right. yes. It's, it's when the head becomes so shrunken, it gets stuck in the neck orifice, just pops out slightly, and uh, it has to be uh, extracted. <laughs> and uh, Mark, how, how's yeah, it Yeah, well, extracted? this is uh, something you <laughs> maybe uh, we've all had, we've all been there, I know. Uh, yeah. This is one where, you know, a little bit of suction always helps. And yeah. Oh. Uh, and he's gone. And out it comes. <laughs> yeah. It's a humorous no, hospital game. To do that. <laughs> That's actually a, a real illness. For yeah, it is. It's real. England. Now, I, I had to ask about something that I think monobrow. every young man has to deal with at some point. What, what is a monobrow infestation? Yeah, well, monobrow is, you know, <laughs> follically enhanced, enhanced yes, yeah. Yeah. problem. We've, We've all been there. Yeah. Uh, well, I haven't. No, but, okay. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, it needs to be diagnosed <laughs> and cured pretty quickly. If it doesn't, it'll fester. And uh, you might shed uh, a bit of hair, and in fact, it, and it can, screen. it will actually leave the body, and it needs to be got rid of uh, before yes. the health inspectors arrive. It looks like the monobrows are multiplying in the hospital. They, they breed very, yeah, they're big breeders. The monobrows, yeah, they like, yeah. uh, they like dirty places. Uh, disgusting. So you've got to keep your hospital clean and well maintained. Yeah. Otherwise, they're and gonna breed. <laughs> You'll have a trouble. I want to ask about sort of how the game evolves over time, because you know, Theme Hospital was very mission-based. How yeah. does the experience of running a hospital change as the game goes on? Yeah. So once you've started your first hospital, it's you know, it's a pretty simple affair, and then you move on through Two Point County. There's different regions. There's a cold region. There's warm regions with uh, infect, you know, contagious diseases. And you know, there's, there's poor there's regions, there's rich well. regions. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we've got volcanoes. Yeah, effects, yeah. yeah we've, we've got all come. sorts oh, of wonderful, uh, weird effects can happen in different parts of the PC world. gamer so show to manage yeah. your hospital it's, empire. It's it seems like mostly a, a, a showcase yeah, of indie games. Place, isn't it? You've got it's, yeah, I know. It's, it's overall it's been pretty boring, but this well, there, there, there's been like one or two that have seemed interesting. Star Citizen, this one they're showing off a hospital well, simulator that's uh, kind of supposed to be funny. Like and, people come uh, in for like out. That's uh, really uh, overgrounding uh, monobrows and, uh, and uh, <laughs> guy came with a turtle head. You couldn't see his head, well, so I put I'm him in his machine really and spun around really fast. So coming out. Thanks so much for joining me, Doctor and Doctor. Uh, it's kind of humorous. It's been possible. weird though. This show, yeah. this game, nothing special. Not really. Now our second oh battle royale oh game of the oh afternoon. boy, another battle royale game. Ben, to you if you want his headphones are plugged in. on Twitch in the previous week. Ben's at work. Let's take a look at High Res's Realm Royale. Not the whole week, but he's uh, he's doing that, and then after work he's going to a bonfire with his coworkers. It's 
so he's, he said he's probably not going to be on path for midnight. Oh. Means we uh, won't be watching Avatar tonight, but if you, have, if you don't have homework, we can do GTA. I don't have homework, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Joining See if you can't get it. Okay. Nubro, AKA Sweet. Dry Bear. Mr. Dry Bear, what separates Realm Royale from other types of battle royale games in the genre? It's a good question. That's so before you go question. up into the air to determine where you land on the map, you'll actually choose from a list of fantasy classes like mage or hunter or assassin and specify a unique play style before you land. But how do these different classes work? So the engineer will be more about like bunkering down, more putting though. up shields, putting down turrets. The assassin will get behind the lines using stealth, use a sniper rifle to take out yeah. targets. And the warrior will just jump in there throwing axes and being crazy. <laughs> and you know, some of the streams that I've watched, it also seemed yeah. like there were abilities, not, not just to make me want to do it. fine stuff. I have PUBG if I really want to play mechanics work. Game. Once you choose a class, it'll come with a set yeah. of abilities, and you'll actually be upgrading these during the match, but it specifies as your oh, play yeah. style. And so as you're looting, abilities as well as armor and weapons will come out of the chest. Okay. You'll start equipping that and determining the play style you want, and so you can just really specify. And, you know, you, you mentioned this a little bit. I've seen it on stream. Talk to me about crafting in the game. I mean, how does crafting work in a game where there's a constantly shrinking play circle? We're really excited about this. So strewn across the map, there are places called forges. And so once you go to the forge, you'll collect shards from disenchanting loot you find as you're going about. And you'll use these shards if to the start crafting legendary gear, them, very powerful uh, pieces that everyone will want. Yeah. Once you start the forge, a smokestack will appear above the forge and everyone comes over to like fight. Like a mini objective even. Big team fight. <laughs> So I know that Realm Royale is currently available for free on Steam, but I hear that you have some goodies people can check out that are E3 exclusive. That's right. So free on Steam, we're actually out for less than a week now, and we are already number four on Steam charts. And this week at, at E3, oh through Mixer, if you stream on Mixer and you're playing, the streamer that gets closest to the Crown Royale will enter into the hype zone, and so everyone will see you on, you'll be featured on the main page of Mixer. You'll have a chance to win the Jailbird Chicken Skin, which is our first piece of cosmetic. It's a little chicken <laughs> with like a little Jailbird, like, yeah. like prisoner outfit, and just box around, it's hilarious. Yeah, and if you don't know the chicken mechanic, seriously, please, Look it up right now. Rory, <laughs> thanks so much for joining me on stage to talk about Realm Royale. Once thanks, again, sir. it's for free on Steam right now. Our next game is one that was shown at last year's PC gaming show, and Frankie has some updates of what they've been up to. Yes, John, as you may remember, our next game is made by a core team of just two people. It's called Ubert, uh, and it's a farming and creature collecting tiny. indie inspired by Pokemon, Harvest Moon, and Animal Crossing. <laughs> this fresh trailer features a first look at their unique combat system, along with plenty of cute ooblets and environments. Let's take a gander. Ooblets. It looks kind of like them a little bit, but... Oh, okay. That looks, that looks like, um, Pikmin. <laughs> ah, is this made by two people? Hey. PC gaming show without a dash of strategy, which is why I'm delighted that we get the chance to share with you the next in the Anno games. Let's take a look at Anno 1880. Hmm, okay. I'm, I've heard that title. This one's, is, it's either similar to Civilization or like Age of Empires. It's one of those. Anno. I like how there's people walking around, that makes it feel much more alive.
Huh. That looks interesting. It looks really good. Anno 1800. Hmm. Okay. Joining me on the stage to talk about it is the executive producer, Burkhart Ratheiser, and community developer, Bastian Thun. Gentlemen, welcome to the stage. I want to begin right away by asking, you know, for people who haven't seen or experienced the Anno series, what are these types mm -hmm. of games like? Yeah, well, uh, Anno 1800 is um, a PC um, only um, real-time strategy game. And um, it's kind of uh, mixing um, uh, city building together with um, economic simulation mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. naval warfare. And at its core, it's, um, it's a sandbox game. So um, you have a, a, free, um, a vast amount of freedom yeah. to explore, um, to um, explore the world and build huge cities. And I wonder if you could talk to me a little bit about why the choice of the 19th century for this game. Well, the 19th century, is, it's such an interesting and rich era that um, mm -hmm. there was so much um, um, happening in, in this era. Yeah. So we had uh, two, um, industrial revolutions. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, major scientific inventions um, uh, and uh, also big social changes and also the, great, the creation of the big imperial empires. So it's yeah. a really rich era. And what are some of the elements that we'll get to see from the 19th century in Anno 1800? So it's, it's kind of for the player, it's uh, well, basically you start you, with the first um, the um, kind of medieval s settlements yeah. and then it's a kind, of, kind of a journey through the 19th century. So it's a kind of you explore everything that kind of happened in, the, yeah. in, in this rich era. And I understand that you have a very unique take on how to work with the community, how to gather feedback. I was wondering if you could talk to me about what is Anno Union? So last year at Gamescom, when we actually revealed the game, we decided on, you know what, it's pre-alpha, revealed the game. We invited the community to basically become a part, a member of our, of our uh, development team. So we launched our Anno Union platform. It's a place where we give constant weekly uh, updates on the current yeah. development and invite players to give feedback and basically help us developing the game. Can you give me like an example of exactly how some choices have been steered by the community? So there's a lot of different stuff we did. So like from uh, the feedback we got on our blogs and uh, focus playtests where invited players, we got so much great feedback, uh, yeah, which led to completely rebalance the mid and late game of uh, the game. Also, we heavily uh, expanded on core features of the game based on feedback. We said like, okay, that that's re really uh, seems to work. Players like that. So okay. Let's do it, like, uh, improve the quality a little bit even more. Yeah. But um, they can also vote on actual game content. So we had a big vote for an AI opponent in the game, yeah. for a community creation contest where they could create their own island and stuff like that. And, and I understand that some of this mm -hmm. uh, footage that you're sharing right now is pieces that people can go to anno-union.com and vote on right now. Exactly. So right just in time for E3, you can go to anno-union.com, check out. We have a vote up where you can vote on one of five ships in the game. And that's only the first stage, because in the second stage, we will allow you to design your own ship variant. Hmm. So the winner of that uh, first vote, then you can design, hand in your own design nodes, drawings, 3D models, whatever you like. And the winner of that contest will actually make it into the game. Now, where is the website nice. that people can go to again to get the most information right now? Yeah, just check out anno-union.com. That's basically our big community platform, and we want to, to invite especially strategy gamers, PC players yeah. out there to come help us developing the game, sharing feedback, just check it out. Well, gentlemen, thank you for joining me on stage to talk about Anno 1800. Our next title is the final battle royale of the night, and Frankie hey. is gonna be talking about it. It's a little Another bit, one. maybe not what you'd expect. Publisher Tiny really? Build is known for discovering distinctive indie developers and bringing their quirky ideas to the fore, with cluster trucks, speedrunners, and Hello Neighbor among their catalog of hits. And now I'm delighted to be able to bring you the world-exclusive reveal of a game developed by Galvanic Games in cooperation with Explosion. 
Inspired by the cyanide and happiness webcomic, Rapture Rejects <laughs> is Battle Royale as you've never seen one before, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not. Uh. Top down, isometric, cartoony, and basically bonkers. Let's take a look at what happens the when the man upstairs makes an epic fail and then he beams up the bad people. Introducing Rapture Rejects. Dear God, every day I strive to be closer to your light. I pray that when Judgment Day, that most holiest of days, comes upon us, when you bring all the good people to heaven, that I may live in eternal glory by your side. Amen. What the heck? Huh? Little help. Thanks, bro. Ah. Oh. Well, it's, yeah, it's supposed to be like a, a, I think they said it's a battle royale game that's based off of Cyanide Happiness, called Rapture Reach. What the heck? Battle royale is not even that fun. Well, this is like the third one they've announced. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he lost us. What? What the oh. heck? <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> I can't believe we got to show that trailer. That's so great. <laughs> Just, Our oh, final man, game heck? that we'll be showcasing this evening the is from one. perhaps the most famous stealth action franchise in gaming, the Hitman mm. series. Okay, Let's take Hitman, a look yeah. at a brand new trailer from Hitman 2. Racing game? <laughs> oh, I see. Welcome to Miami, 47. Miami. The innovation race is on its last day, and it is down to the wire. The Providence defectors are hmm. Robert and Sierra Knox. A day of high-octane thrills and two very public targets. Joining me to talk about Hitman 2 is game director from IO Interactive, Jacob Mickelson. Join me up here, Jacob. Come on out, we gotta talk. Assassination. Hey, Sean. <laughs> Welcome, Jacob. Thanks oh, for joining me. I mean, that. right away, tell me, what is Agent 47 doing in yours? Miami? Well, um, he's there to, uh, yeah, pivot Thanks. to Sharon Robert Knox, who uh, part of the concept, the Empire. And yeah, we all know how that ends, right? <laughs> Well, given that it's a Hitman game, I have some hints. And, you know, I always felt like in the Hitman games, the environment was so critical, trying to study and trying to understand it. What are some of the elements 
in Miami that will show up in Hitman 2. Yeah, well, absolutely. Miami is, uh, I think it's one of the biggest events we've ever created in, in the game. And uh, in Miami, we have, of course, the race as the centerpiece. Yeah. But being this super high detailed sandbox, we also go to great lengths to actually create all the surrounding uh, bits and pieces uh, like you have here, backstage area. Of yeah. course, we also have that in Miami. So pits and paddocks, there's an emergency room and so on. So all the facilities needed in order for you to kind of make your own way through the yeah. mission and take advantage of the locations and all the different disguises and items you stumble upon as you yeah. move in closer to your targets. And in terms of mechanics, I know that there's going to be a lot of the familiar feels, but what are some of the brand new mechanics that are in Hitman? Yeah, some of the new stuff is, uh, for instance, uh, the crowds we saw so here in Miami. Uh, first of all, there's more than ever. Yeah, uh, there's, there's, we're close to 2,000 people now in the scenes. And uh, on top oh, of wow. that, we also introduced a new crowd mechanic <clears throat> where you, uh, you can dip into the crowd if you get in trouble. So as long as they are not mm -hmm. uh, fleeing or running away, then they're there for you to hide in, so in case you get chased by guards. Another new thing is the picture-in-picture -picture, uh, mechanic where you get information right. about what's going on other places in the level. So if you're setting up traps and stuff like that, you can kind of keep track of where the important characters are. Uh -huh. And last but not least, we have uh, the fan favorite, right? which is the sniper briefcase uh, is back. But this time it's not only <laughs> for, for sniper rifles, it's also for all the other things you want to carry around kind of without calling too much attention to yourself. And but I want to ask about some of the weapons and the disguises that have been showing up throughout these trailers. Yeah, we go to great lengths. I think the, the, the theme of, uh, of this showing is going to be the fish. It's really uh, it's a studio favorite. Uh, we, <laughs> we're having a, a lot of laughs uh, yeah. at that, right? And then, and then, of course, you just saw it in the kitchen as a frying pan. So we all know the kitchen is the most dangerous house, uh, room in your house, right? Yeah, so, yeah, of course. Also counts in Hitman. And I, I want to ask about some of my favorite content from Hitman, things like elusive targets, limited time events. Will those be making a comeback? Absolutely. So there's still going to be escalations for you to kind of challenge the game in many different ways. Uh, there's going to be uh, challenge packs, uh, mm -hmm. again, new challenge for you. And then, of course, the elusive targets that pop up for a short period of time only. And you have one shot at this or, yeah, oh, yeah. robust. As my final question, the expected question, when does Hitman 2 come out? Hitman 2 comes out November 3rd, November 13th, and if you pre-order right now, you also get access to a new game mode called Sniper Assassin, where you get to play as Agent 47, and also, for the first time in the franchise, you can play along with a friend in the co-op mode. Well, Jacob, thank you so much for coming out. I'm super looking forward to Hitman 2. Thank you. I might be the worst Thanks. Hitman ever, but I try hard. Now, Jacob, I'm going to thank you. Thank you. And I'm going to escort you off to the right. So you're going to rush off this way, because coming in from the left, for the first time ever, vaguely nearby me, it's the co-host, Frankie. Come here, Frankie. They let me come down from the balcony for good behavior. Excellent. <laughs> well, Frankie, we did it. We the did. PC Gaming Show is done. Thank you so much for joining us to host this year. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for all of you who came out to the Will Turn and joined us today. It was a blast. Thanks to Twitch chat. I know that everything you said was appropriate and intelligently thought out. And of course, this year, we're curating even more great PC games from the Facebook booth in E3 South Hall. Last, and of course, not least, a huge thank you to all our wonderful sponsors who let the PC Gaming Show come back for a fourth straight year. They are High res Studios, Digital Extremes, Archangel Hellfire, Team 17, Stardock Entertainment, Acer, Predator, Improbable, Oculus Rift, Drake's Cakes, Tripwire, Frontier Developments, and Square Enix. We hope you have a wonderful E3 and go play some damn video games. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> all right, I will. Well, how's that? It was uh, not what I was expecting. I'm just not a very big indie gamer. But, way to go trying to get you know, these small companies' names out there. Yep, that's that. Well,. I think Sony's coming up here in a little over an hour or something like that. So I'll be back, maybe maybe with Gerd or Taylor. Ben, Santa will be gone for the night. So anyway, catch us later. Um, PlayStation gamers out there will hopefully be excited to see what's coming, up, coming next in the coming year.